اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم قل هو اللہ وحد اللہ السمد لم یلد ولم یولد ولم یکل له کفواً احد لیڈیز اینڈ جنٹلمین ویلکم تو دا لنڈن سنٹرل ماسک این دا اسلامک کلچر سنٹر ٹوڈے ایونٹ از اے لیکچر دس از دا فورتھ لیکچر under the umbrella of our lectures of the ICC libraries. Today's lecture is about health, good health, healthy food and diet and how to maintain your health without medicines. Today our speaker is, his name is Dr. Ahmad Abdul Malik. He is a medical doctor. He is from Kuwait. And he is going to touch so many uh, fields in his lecture for all of us that how we can maintain our health without medicines. Then now I'm requesting Dr. Ahmad Abdul Malik to have his lecture. Dr. Ahmad Abdul Malik. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for attending and th thank you for the Islamic Center for inviting me to give you a lecture. I, I will start from there. Uh, one of the ladies here, she told me, you are giving a lecture on healthy uh, lifestyle and there is at the back, biscuit and chocolate. And this like happened everywhere I go to give health lectures, I see that. It reminds me of my house. When I was young, you know this table in the living room, my mother used to put chocolate like that, cakes. And when I finish my medical school, I finish medical school in Dublin, Royal College of Surgeon. So I told my mother, why this, I mean this, chocolate and candies everywhere uh, in our house. Why, why don't you put healthy things? She told me kids will not eat them. I said, just, just change and, and see. So yes, my mother was a good mother. She took all the chocolate and the bad things and she put nuts, dried fruit. And then we noticed the grandsons, the kids, I, as, as they playing, they see like uh, walnut, they will take one. They see uh, dried fruit, they take one. And now it's a <coughs> habit in our family. There's no chocolate at the house. There is only healthy food. So, um, and this is health. Uh, a lot of people ask me, what is health? Health is your habits from the time you wake up in the morning until you sleep. Those small things will make up your health. Like, um, when you drink your, co your, your tea or coffee, do you put sugar or you don't put sugar? How is your breakfast? Do you use whole grain bread or use white refined bread? Do you put some protein in your breakfast? Okay, but between breakfast and lunch, what snack are you eating? When you go to, to work, do you take your food lunch with you? Um, how do you eat your lunch? Uh, do you consume like a uh, good amount of vegetable and clean protein? Um, do you walk a lot? Uh, do you visit your doctor a lot? Um, so health is small habits. It's like um, I try to make it like, you know the Mona Lisa picture? Like imagine the, the painting as small, small squares. Your health is like 20 small squares. Your habits from time you wake up until you sleep. Every, yeah, every, every good, every good healthy habit, you will add a good, beautiful, colorful square to the painting. And the opposite is true. Every bad habit, smoking, junk food, a lot of candies, overweight, whatever, you will add um, a colorless, square to the painting. So if you put a lot of color on the painting, the painting will be beautiful, and so is your health. And um, 
the opposite way uh, is true. Um, I'm a doctor, so I studied medicine. But you know, medicine is like mathematics. There is rules, like 1 plus 1 equal 2, right? Health, if you put the right data, you will reach a good health. And the opposite apply. If you put a wrong data, bad data, any smoker, any smoker, he will have sooner or later a problem related to smoking. Even if it's his lung and his heart and his blood vessels, he will have. This is an uh, inviable result. So let me, uh, let me start with, uh, with this. Um, as a doctor, I, told, I'm, I can tell you that not most people, all people don't appreciate health until they lose it or they lose part of it. Um, let me ask you this, even for young uh, people. Do you appreciate your knees? Uh, yes, you do? Um, well, if your knees is healthy, you don't know the great job that it do. Go ask anyone with, with osteoarthritis about the knees. She will tell you, oh my God, the knees are, oh my, I, I am dreaming of one day or two days pain free from my knees. Um, the digestive symptoms. Uh, ask anyone with a problem in his uh, GI, who, he will tell you, but you don't appreciate all the healthy things until it's like you have a problem in that. Ask anyone with back pain, with disc problems. You, you don't appreciate your back and, until there is some problem there. So my talk today is all about preventive medicine, prevention. Uh, I'm a family medicine, I'm a family medicine doctor. So I see, I mean, in the, two, in the, in the first two years of my work, I, yani I noticed that and for sure that most of people's problems are preventable if they take a good care of their lifestyle before problems occur. So this is my talk about, like this period before, before you have the, the problem. So step five. Step five, um, habits or things that you should um, consider in your health. And it's from the most important and so on. So the most important factor of your health is what? Is food. If you want to start somewhere in health, start with food. Food is the uh, most influential uh, factor in your health. Um, you are what you eat. Uh, this phrase, it was said 4,000 year, years ago from a Greek doctor called Hippocrates, when we finish medicine, we do, you know, the Hippocrates oath, like, but we Muslim, we say, we swear by Allah. But this guy, he was from Greece, Athens, 4,000 years ago, he say, you are what you eat. And this is right. As a doctor, I'm telling you, food can be the medicine to prevent diseases, to cure diseases, food can be a medicine. And the opposite apply, food can be poison that will bring you a lot of bad stuff, a lot of diseases. So start with, start with food. Uh, the, the color of the, uh, of, the, of the slide is not very clear. Um, I will be simple. So I will give you two simple rules on food. And those rules are from Quran. Rule number one is quality of food, quality. And you know there is ayah called, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu. This ayah talk about quality of food, okay? And the simple rule is eat like your grandparent eat from nature, not processed food, natural food, okay? A studies now shows that 90% of our food is refined, processed, okay? So rule number one is simple, eat like your grandparent. Eat chicken, not chicken nugget. Eat beef or lamb, not hot dog and burgers, okay? Eat uh, natural grains, uh, brown rice, uh, burgul, you know what, burgul, frika, uh, those all whole grains. Don't eat a lot of bread and processed wheat, okay? So this is simple, try, try to make your food natural from the, from the ration. Number two is, uh, Quantity, 
quantity matter. <laughs> uh, there is hadith uh, from our prophet, ma mala adamiyun what? Wi'a'an sharram ibatna. Like uh, the translation is, um, it's so bad to fill your stomach every time you eat. Full. And uh, in, in our culture, especially the, the Gulf area, when we go to lunch, it's like war. You know? You don't stop until the food is like... Yeah, and this is not right, guys. This is not, this is not right. Because if you eat until it's like that, you, 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 you ate more than you need. And every amount you eat more than you need, it will be stored as fat in your body. Okay, so this is a simple rule, quality, quantity. Um, so tips eat like your grandparent. Number uh, two, 80, 20 rules. Uh, 80, 20 rules imply as 80% of your food is healthy and good, but there is 20% of the of good of those bad things if you if you crave an ice cream if you have like in our house a pizza day every friday it's a pizza day for the kids some day you want to eat in kfc or mcdonald's some some you want to grab a chocolate cake that's fine in the healthy lifestyle there is a room for those things but the most of your food is what is healthy one one of the, one of the ladies was telling me uh, before the lectures I'm trying on a good diet, but sometimes I lose control and I feel guilty. You don't have to feel, to feel guilty. You have to enjoy. You have to enjoy. In, in a healthy lifestyle, there is room for what, Mr. Sajjad? There is room for evil things. There is room. But as 80-20 rule, 80% of your food is healthy, natural, and 20% is a fun food. Because if you try to do the 100% healthy food, I'm afraid that you will reach like a breaking point and you will, uh, you will, you know, you will open. Uh, so, 80 20 rules. Uh, number two, be in control of your food. One of the, for me as a doctor, one of the good signs that this person is healthy is when I see him coming to work with his lunch books because he's in control. He, he controls what, what he eats. I, I feel happy when I see now uh, some people in Starbucks cafe or when they, we travel, go somewhere, she opened her bags and she uh, brought, uh, bring a banana or a handful of, of nuts. If you don't do that, you'll see anything here and there you will eat. And most of the choices, food choices here and there are bad. Okay, so, so this is a simple rule. Put in your bag, uh, I... I always kill, tell my sister they have big bags and there is nothing usual in their bags. So I told them at least put some, something for the kids when you go out. Okay, uh, the rule, uh, the last rule is um, no, day, no day pass by without veggies, fruit, and nuts. No days pass by without veggies, fruit, and nuts. Um, I will speak a little about fruits. Um, fruits are natural sugar, okay? We are born with this sugar craving. You know, sometimes you, you want sugar. Uh, I eat fruit a lot. I eat fruit daily. If you eat fruit daily, um, your chocolate and artificial sugar craving will go down. And the opposite is right. If you don't eat fruit at all, I guarantee you that every day you will consume one bar or two bar of chocolate because you didn't fulfill this sugar craving uh, instinct that we have. All humans have this sugar instinct human. The first thing that went into our, to our mouth is sugar from the milk. Milk is sugar, lactose, okay? So all we are human, we have this sugar craving since we are, since day one of our, uh, so if you are a chocolate addict, start from today to eat one fruit or two fruit a day, and you will notice by a short time that this sugar craving to uh, cakes and chocolate will go down. Okay, so this is number one food. Start here. I give you a simple advices. Work with quality and quantity, and um, 
80-20 rules, be in control of food and uh, always daily vegetable, fruit, and nuts. Um, slide number two, which I forget to put, I was in a hurry to put. The, the factor number two in health is exercise, sport. I was in talk with Mr. Sajjad before, and he told me he is doing, uh, he's changing his lifestyle and his food, and that's it. I told him, no, those two ways, there is, those two things have to work together. Food and exercise. Um, exercise, uh, if you ask me, what is the most common sentence I tell to my patient is, go exercise. Anyone who come to me with a little bit of blood pressure, I will tell him exercise a bit. With blood sugar, exercise a bit. With cholesterol, exercise a bit. Back pain, exercise a bit. Um, irritable bowel syndrome, exercise a bit. Um, something with my knees, exercise a bit. So exercise is the magic, magic recipe for health. You have to exercise. You have to, okay? And um, what is the best exercise? This exercise is the exercise you, you like and love. You like running, jogging, swimming, that's fine. Is walking an exercise? Yes, but there's terms. Number one, uh, walking should be a habit. It's not like you walk one day and then you forget walking for one month and you said it's exercise. It's be, it should be at least five or four times a week. Number two, it has to be continuous. So if you, are, if you are going shopping, ladies, this is not an exercise because you are walking and stopping, walking and stopping. For walking to be exercise, like to increase the metabolism of your body, it has to be at least 20 or 25 minutes of continuous uh, walking. Tip number three, always wear a walking shoes. Like, don't walk with the uh, formal shoes. Sooner or later, you, have, you will have some problem with your foot ligament, okay? So yes, ex walking is a good, perfect, cheap. Uh, everyone can do it. You can do it outdoor, indoor. Um, if you want to do more, that's fine. But please, don't wait for a health problem to exercise, to walk. Walk and exercise before those health problems. Okay. Um, number three in, your, in the health is sleep. So if I ask you how long, uh, how long should you sleep or what are the magical numbers of sleep uh, a day that we need? Eight hours. And this is not right. This is a, a myth because we are different. I need six hours. She needs seven hours. Uh, I had one, uh, one patient in Kuwait, a lady. She only sleep three hours and a half. And she went crazy. She went to all doctors in Kuwait. Doctor, why don't I sleep? So she came to my clinic. So I started to ask her, is it like um, the sudden things that you don't sleep much? She said, no, it's all my life. So I asked her, when you wake up, are you tired? She said, no, I'm, I'm fine all the day. I said, okay, let's run some tests. So I, I did some thyroid, vitamin B12, vitamin D, and everything was fine. So my answer to her, and she was taking like sleeping pills, my answer to her was, this is your, your numbers. This is your numbers. You, you only need three and a half hours a day. This is rare, this is genetic, but there's no problem, okay? So there is like a magic number for everyone. For me, my magic number, I sleep six hours at night, and I, I have an up of 30 minutes. If I do that, everything is fine with me. The magic number of your sleep, the definition is the number of hours that you have to sleep. When you wake up, you wake up good, in a good mood, and you spend your day with power and energy. So, and it's important to give your body those time of sleep. It's important to do that. When, when we sleep, our heart rate goes down, our blood vessels relax, and there is hormones that get secreted when we sleep, the growth hormone. The growth hormone for the kids to grow up, but for, for us adults to repair, to decrease the inflammation in our body, to, to build the cells. Everything happens when you sleep. When you are sick, 
The doctor, the GP here will tell you, go home, rest, and sleep. Why? Because the immune system activates more when you sleep. So sleep, sleep is really important, and it deserves that you put some effort in knowing how, how many hours you, you do sleep. Before I uh, skip sleep, is napping, is napping good? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, a lot of medical studies that show that short um, sleeping in the afternoon is very good for your mental health. You, it will get charged up and refresh and so on. And there is hadith from Rasul like take a nap. And but, but there is two terms. Number one, uh, the nap shouldn't exceed 45 minutes. If you exceed 45 minutes, you will go into deep stages of sleep. You will wake up headache with a bad mood. Anything under 45 minutes. And it's not for, for everyone. For me and for our family, like we like to nap. But for some people, they, they don't need napping. So it's optional. If you feel napping is good for you, make it every day, but less than 45 minutes. Okay, uh, preventive medicine. Um, if, I, if I ask each one of you um, the amount of money you have in the bank, you will tell me, right? Some people will tell you every penny, right? I advise you that you should know those numbers about your body like you know your bank account. How, how many do you have? Number one, your weight. And we can assess weight by BMI, body mass index. You have to know your weight. Is it normal? Good. Overweight? Okay. Uh, obesity? Obesity, grade one, grade two, grade three. Uh, as long as you are in the uh, BMI 20, 25 normal, you are fine. 25, 30 overweight and you are active, it's, it's okay by the way. Not, uh, we don't need everybody to be really perfect. Um, normal, it's fine. Little overweight, little chubby is, is fine. No health problem as long as you move and exercise. If you have obesity, if your weight is, if your BMI is above 30, you have to put a plan to decrease because sooner or later, those extra kilograms will make a problem here or there in your body, in your knees, in your back, in your sugar, in your pressure, in your heart. Sooner or later, it will make a problem. Okay? So number one, please know where is your weight? Number two, your blood pressure. When was the last time you took your blood pressure, Mr. Sajjad? Well, uh, month ago. It was good? Yeah. That's very good. Uh, you, do, you don't need to take your pressure every day or every week. Every six months is fine or every year is fine. Because the pressure will not go up like suddenly. It will take time. Blood pressure is really important. Why? Because hypertension or increased pressure is silent. Some people think that if they have pressure, they have headache. No, it's a silent. You will not feel anything. Okay? So be sure that you know your blood pressure. Number two, it's called HbA1c. This is your sugar. Uh, we, don't, we don't depend on the, uh, on the fasting sugar now because uh, it will get reflected by what you ate yesterday. HbA1c reflects your average sugar in the last three months. Okay? Uh, 6.5 and below, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is fine. Um, so please, if you have, if it's now one year, you didn't check your pressure or HbA1c, go do it. Number uh, three is uh, lipid profile, especially nowadays with the, with the modern diet and a lot of uh, bad fat, a lot of sugar. You have to know your cholesterol. You have to know your bad cholesterol, which is called LDL. You have to know your good cholesterol, which is called HDL. And you have to know something called triglyceride. You have to know those four things, not just the cholesterol. It will give a good idea about the, the health of your cardiovascular system. Number four, uh, do once in a while every year a basic profile, full profile. Your kidney function, your liver function, your uric acid, your hemoglobin, like that to make sure that everything is fine with your body. Number five, screening test. And I will tell you a story. Tim and my family. One of my aunts, um, her daughter, 
she was 43 or 44. She called me one time. She said, Fatma, her name is Fatma. She have a lump in her breast. Can we come to you? I said, yes, come to my clinic, no problem. So when, when she come to my clinic, I asked her, how long do you have this lump? She said, one year and something. They were shocked. I was, I was telling her, like, when you, why, why don't you come up? Why don't you show up? She said, I was afraid that something bad. So we have this uh, thinking in my country, like, when there's something bad, it's better to hide it. You know? Yeah. So I call, I, I call one of my friends, and we arrange a, a, a CT, and then a, a biopsy, and it was breast cancer. It was late. The, the cancer was spreading to the axilla, and uh, I think it took her one year and a half, and she passed away. Allah in the same family, in Kuwait, we have a mammogram program for every woman above 40 or 45, depending on the situation. She went to the mammogram. She, they find small lumps, and they took a biopsy. It was cancer. They made a surgery. They didn't remove the breast. They only, it's called lumpectomy. They will only remove the lump. It was 10 years ago. She was completely fine. Last, um, last April, uh, she had her uh, grand, first grandson. So those screening problems can be the, uh, the difference between living long life and storming life. This is, uh, we call it al-akhd bil asbab. You have to. Uh, any man above 50, he have to do a BCA, prostate things. Woman, mammogram, cervical smear, uh, bone density, uh, bowel uh, endoscope. I don't know if the UK, we, we have, you have this program or not. When you go to the GB, just ask him, my age, male or female, what screening test I should do. It's really, really important. Really important. <clears throat> okay. Um, mental well-being. Um, I usually, when a patient comes, I ask him about those four things to assess his mental well-being. How is your mood? How is your mood in the last uh, week, most of the days? Number Two, um, do you have in interest in the things that you like to do? Do you do the things you like to do? Number, one, number uh, three, how is your sleep? Are you sleeping good? And number uh, four, um, how is your appetite? Are you overeating or undereating? This will give me a good idea about the mental health. Um, the thing I notice about people that they don't pay attention to this fun. We all need fun, why? Um, uh, in our life, all of us, we have stresses. It's either from work, family, um, study, exams, like that. And stress, when you are stressed, when you are thinking about something or planning for something, your body will change. It will change from inside. There is something called stress hormones. Um, when I am preparing for my lecture, those hormones will click to make my heart beat fast, to the blood circulation will be stronger, my eyes will be dilated. This is good. Stress is good, by the way. It will make you, it will make the student study good for the exam. If you have a job interview, that stress will, will, will bring the super version of you. But the problem is the prolonged stress. If you are stressed all the time, you, you will not notice it, but it works in your body. Like um, the famous example, mother who uh, teach their kids the exam time. They are, they are says all, all the time. Uh, all the time, the pressure is a little bit up. All the time, what, what happened in stress, uh, the blood got diverted from uh, the brain and from the GI to the skeletal muscle. Because our stress was designed to run from Lions are run from, this is called flight reaction, okay? So when you are stressed, you have headache, right? You have headache. Most of the people have something called tension headache. Uh, their mind is full with uh, family things. At the end of the day, give me two balance I have headache. Tension headache, why? Because the blood got diverted from the 
from their brain to the, to the muscle. They, they will not notice it. Uh, one of the commonest problems I see is my clinic or worldwide now is irritable bowel syndrome. Bloating, gases, pains, same concept because the blood is got diverted from the GI to the muscles. So the peristalsis of the, of the GI is not as should be. So you'll have all sorts of problems. Either in the upper GI, you'll start to have acidity, uh, feeling of fullness, or in the lower GI, a bit of constipation, but if a bit of uh, bloating. And they will go to a lot of doctors, look for a, a lot of medicines, and the answer is simple. Irritable bowel syndrome have to do with your, your mentality, with your, with your stress levels. So fun. You have to do fun because fun will, uh, the, I mean, uh, imagine yourself as uh, like there is input and there is output. Fun will ease a lot of pressure. When was the last time you have a fun activity? And fun is different for me. I like to play football. It's fun for me. I like to walk in the park alone. It's fun for me. I like to take my book and go to the coffee shop and have a coffee and read my, my, any book. For me, this is fun. Uh, in my country, I have those group of friends from school. When we are together, we laugh a lot. This is fun. So um, know what's fun for you, even if you are 60 or 70, and do this fun stuff. It will do magic to your, to your health. And, um, uh, some selfishness is useful. You have to tell if you are a mother and you are a wife, this is time for me. Like, for, this time for me, two hours for me. Please, يعني, especially for the, for the ladies, because I'm a doctor and I know, mashallah, ladies are very good to their families and husband and kids, and they are worse for themselves. So you have to do, you, you have to be selfish to put a time for your walking. A selfish to put time for your so, so do that. <laughs> okay, uh, number, uh, last thing in the mental health is meditation. And you will hear a lot of meditation. And when I say meditation, most people will think about yoga, right? I mean, most people. Meditation, for me, the best definition of meditation, when Prophet, when he wants to pray, he will call Bilal. And what he tell Bilal? Arahna biha ya Bilal. When, when he wants to pray, he will call Bilal, his, his Mu'addin. And he, he will tell him, please comfort us with prayer. Why? 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 Um, Sayyid Aisha, his wife, she said, when prayer, when prayer time come, the Prophet is like, you don't know us. What he do is, the prayer time, he spread all the noises of the the world, like family issues, work issues. When he work, all those stress level will go what? Down. And he will, he will have your, your body when you just don't think about anything. All those heavy hormones in your body, serotonin, dopamine, will start to uh, get in your, in your body. It will decrease your pressure. Make, you, make your blood vessel relax. It will make your immune system work better. It will decrease your sugar. He will do it five times a day, 10 minutes. This is yoga. The yoga, they will try to. This, this is what uh, Muhammad was doing. My mother, she said, she find her peace. She said, when you all sleep at night, and I bring my uh, uh, prayer sajada. I put it in the living room and I, I pray at night. I feel, she said, I feel, I feel fine. I told her, this is your meditation uh, thing. For me, honestly, I try to find the, the meditation and prayer, but the shaitan will come. I noticed that when I finish prayer, you know, when I finish prayer and when I sit down, خلاص, I saw it as taslim. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam. You know those dhikr uh, after salat? I feel, I feel calm and I don't think about anything. So for me, this is my meditation. So now when I finish prayer, I will say for five, ten minutes for this meditation. I know at this time, I am at peace. For you, it can be at praying, it can be walking in the park, 
Some people, when they listen to the classical music, some people, when they do yoga, we are different. If you find it in prayer, that's good. After prayer, is good. But please, every day, just put 10, 15 minutes of of meditation. It will do a lot, a lot of good things in your body, and you will start to notice it. OK. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm nearly finished. I will finish with this sentence. Um, I have been working with uh, medical education and healthy lifestyle for years. I have noticed that, mashallah, everybody want their health to be good, right? Everybody, OK? And fewer, they have the intention. You, you are sitting and, mashallah, sitting here for 45 minutes, listening to me, you have the intention. But I have noticed that few people work for their health, work. And uh, there is ayah, And you know, for a result, you have to work. Okay? So I think if you, if you got something from my lecture today that will that suit you, like about food, yeah, I'm eating a lot of junk, I'm not eating, I'm not eating. Just open your uh, phone, notes, or bring a paper and put goals, write goals to you. Number two, uh, be realistic. Don't, I mean, as I told you, uh, health is like habits, okay? You cannot in one month change your, your life from here to there. You have to be realistic. Start with two or three goals. If you don't walk, walk. Make it a habit, change anything else, two goals, finish after two months, the other two goals. For me, like um, I will tell you what, what I did last uh, two months. Uh, I'm a coffee lover and a tea lover. So I said, I drink like three coffees and two teas a day. I will, I will stop putting sugars. And this was my uh, one month task. Um, I, told, I, I will tell you what happened. The first two days, the tea, I didn't enjoy my tea, honestly. Yeah. But I said, it's OK, let's just whisper. hold on. The third day, I'm drinking my tea, but it's fine. I'm not enjoying as before. The fifth day, I noticed something. I start to taste the tea, the real taste of the tea. Because now, Mr. Sajjad, if you give me tea with sugar, I will, not, I will get annoyed. Because I will feed the sugar, not the tea. Only in six days, I reprogram my taste bud to the tea without sugar. And as a formula, I, tr I drink three or four cups of tea, two or one teaspoons. So I think I at, at one year, I will get rid of this much of sugar in my body. This is a simple habit, but it will make big difference. So be realistic. Change one or two every, every two months. Uh, start now. And number four, always feel happy about yourself when you do something to your health. The best investment that you should do is to your health. Yani, uh, if you ask anyone what is the best investment, some will say like real estate, right? Some, I don't know. Uh, one of my patients was the biggest uh, businessman in Kuwait. He was, uh, he's a multi-millionaire, multi-billionaire. So when he came to my clinic with some um, uh, GI problems, uh, which was he didn't uh, come to, to, uh, to us unless he was vomiting blood. He was having symptoms for six months. So, so it was diagnosed with uh, stomach cancer. So he told me this, this uh, uh, phrase I will not forget. He told me, I'm ready to sacrifice all my, all my billions to go six years back in time to change the bad things I was doing. But this is, will not be done. I mean, this can't be done. So the best investment to invest is, is to your health and your family health. And um, so I'm, I'm nearly finished. Uh, I hope I did um, some brief, short, Talk. I didn't want to put all uh, slides. Yeah, sure, sure. All slides with a lot of information, practical point. 
Uh, I hope that you um, enjoyed it. And uh, if you have any question, I will be happy to answer it.